Hello. Hello, everyone. Awesome. Thank you all for coming. This is awesome. Um, we kind of have a weird room over here with uh, this side. Can't see this side. Uh, I actually I have twins at home, so it's, uh, if I neglect one of the I'm usually good about splitting attention. But if not, do what my kids do and just start crying on this side. Uh, so I'm Pavan Tapadia. I'm on the product team at Yammer. This is Juliet Way. She's on our product marketing team. We really want to thank you all for coming. And uh, we have a pretty full house, but there's more seats on this side if people want to come on this side. I, I want to start by asking everyone a favor. Um, we're going to start by having everyone just introduce themselves. So I think we'll, <laughs> no. OK, but I do, want to, I do have a favor. I do have a favor to ask. I want you to look around and look at the people around you. Because we are each trying to change our own companies, Microsoft included, to be more connected. Uh, to be more open, to work more openly. And as I've heard from many of you, it's a challenge at a lot of these organizations. So this room, this is some of the most ambitious people at this conference. So I want you to look around, look at the people next to you, and I want you to meet each other during this conference. Look at who's sitting next to you, talk to each other. We undoubtedly have much we can learn from each other. As change champions, we're all on this social journey together. And we're going to spend most of today at this session talking about what we're doing in the product to help you drive that change at your companies. So we'll talk a little bit about the product. We'll talk about the, the, sorry, the mission and the progress we're making. We'll spend most of the time doing demos, showing the stuff we've been building, stuff that's releasing soon. And then we'll spend some time on the future roadmap. So this is Yammer circa 2008 when we launched. Crazy, huh? We've come a, come a long way. Yeah. And it started with this vision to connect companies internally, the way Facebook and Twitter had connected us in our personal lives. And initially, it was just us at Yammer who were using this crazy idea. But we soon started to use it for all of our internal communications. And we saw the power of empowering our employees, of working out loud, and we stopped using email entirely. And then other companies started to sign up. Many of you were actually early adopters. And Yammer started to grow really quickly. Enterprise social became a category. And then there were dozens of competitors. Every company had to have an enterprise social strategy. And then in 2012, the momentum continued, and Microsoft bought Yammer. And that really validated the category. It felt like we had just qualified for the Olympics. We were now running, uh, we were competing at the highest level. We were running next to Outlook and Office. Enterprise social was going to reinvent productivity. And then the hype died down. People were disillusioned by what enterprise social could be. When Microsoft bought Yammer, it seemed that Yammer was going to be everywhere, but then it wasn't. It seemed as though we had fallen just when it mattered most. How many of you guys saw the, uh, oh, by the way, there's more, there's seats on this side if, uh, if you want to walk over. How, how many people saw the women's 400 meter Olympics at the uh, finals at the Rio Olympics? All right, a handful. Not a lot of sports fans. <laughs> OK, but you might have seen this photo anyway, because it went viral. This photo of Bahamas runner Shawnee Miller falling at the race. Yeah. It went viral. So you might have saw it. Now, I would show you the photo, but apparently I need a signed release from Shawnee Miller. And she didn't return any of my emails. So we're going to use our imagination. But you probably saw this photo, because it was on Facebook, it was on Twitter, CNN, it went viral, it was everywhere. And I'm sure the millions who saw the photo felt the pain of what it must be like to work so hard only to fall. Now, if you look past that viral photo, if you zoom out to the fuller context, you realize that Shawnee Miller dove at the end of that race to win gold, to barely win gold, by 0.07 seconds. And so that's what I want to do today about Yammer. I want to get past the catchy headline, past the easy story. Let's zoom out to the fuller context. As part of Office 365, we haven't been as vocal as we used to be. But during that time, we've been working really hard on a lot of really big engineering investments to connect Yammer to the suite, to deliver what you and other customers have been asking for. And you saw some of the fruits of that labor earlier this year when we turned on Office Identity and we connected Yammer to every uh, Office 365 tenant, uh, which is awesome. Today, you'll see more of the fruits of that labor when we talk about Office 365 groups, and you'll see more over the months to come. 
And so now that you know the full story of Shawnee Miller, let's talk about the fuller context around Yammer. If you had doubts about the future of Yammer, then I'd ask that you'd go out and just see the line for our wheel. Uh, no. <laughs> if you have doubts about the future of Yammer, you should rest easy. Because Yammer's growing really quickly. We're adding more users now than at any other time in our history. Faster than even when the hype around enterprise social was highest. And this isn't by accident. The team has been hard at work adding a lot of new features, a lot of new innovations. This is just a partial list of what we've built in the last 12 months. And as you know, we A-B test all our features. So this isn't just you know, things that, that we built. These are things that help drive a change in user behavior. And this doesn't include any of the things we're going to show you today in the demos. And in case you're curious, Microsoft is investing in Yammer. We have more headcount this year uh, than, than, than last year. We're hiring in just about every team, in the, every department in the team. Office 65 groups, how I love thee. <laughs> you know, we probably started talking about this a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, and what people heard was that Office 65 groups was the future, that it was going to be the replacement for Yammer. <laughs> Boy, did we botch that message. Uh, in reality, Office 65 Groups is a common infrastructure. It's this group infrastructure that sits across the suite that every app is going to take advantage of. And today, you're going to see how Yammer is going to take advantage of Office 365 Groups. Office 365 Groups is not going to kill Yammer. It's a killer feature of Yammer. So I talked a little bit about how we built all these new features, and that's helped drive all this growth around Yammer. But that's not true. Yammer is growing really quickly because of the value it helps companies achieve, because of the work that you and your teams are able to do with Yammer at your companies, because of what TransLink was able to achieve through Yammer. TransLink is the, uh, the bus and rail system in Northern Ireland. And they bought Office 365, and they were using Outlook, Exchange. They were just really just using email. And so they brought in the Microsoft Adoption and Change Management team to come help them come up with scenarios for how they can take advantage of the rest of the suite. And they ran these adoption workshops. And they brought in uh, people on the ground. They brought in their trained engineers, their trained drivers. And they asked them, they said, what is your biggest problem right now? What is the problem you need to solve? And one of the trained engineers raises his hand and says, that's easy. The air conditioning units on our new buses don't work. Now, obviously, five can do a lot of things, but it doesn't fix air conditioning units. But then the engineer said, um, I know how to fix them. The problem is, I'm the only one. And I could submit a change modification approval to the modification team, um, but by the time I do that and we work back and forth and figure out the approval, and then it gets rolled out to all the engineering, other engineering depots, it takes three to four months. So what this engineer was doing was every time a bus rolled into his depot, he would fix that one. Well, that's clearly not sustainable. That doesn't scale. So what they did is they worked with the modification approval team and moved that process to Yammer. And so now all the engineers, they, when they have a, a modification to propose, they upload it to this Yammer group. They use their mobile phones, they upload photos, they, they write, write comments, and they go back and forth with that modification approval team to finalize the approval, and then it gets rolled out through Yammer. That process that used to take three to four months now takes three to four days. And so now, you know, after that pilot process, they've moved all their engineers from all their depots. They're all on Yammer. Uh, and they've moved other processes to Yammer, like procurement of new parts. That's real business value. But also, think about this engineer. He, like, he knew there was a problem. He knew the solution. But yet, he was fixing buses one at a time. And now, he finally had a voice to be able to help drive more change at this company. And that's really what Yammer is about. That's our mission, is to break down those barriers within a company to help co connect people and information together so they can make better decisions faster. So what does this really mean in a company? I'm, I have a, another audience participation uh, question for you guys. Raise your hand if you can think of a process that you've replaced with Yammer. OK, some of you. Uh, so a lot of you with your hands down. So either you can't think of a process, or you just hate audience participation. <laughs> I don't know. But we see this a lot. We see this a lot with new networks, with new users. They come in. And they map their ideas of social from their consumer lives into the enterprise. And so then Yammer becomes this social outlet within a company. And they come in, they organize around interests and hobbies, and they share some photos, and they make comments. And Yammer becomes another place to check. 
But that is not the purpose of Yammer. That is not the product we're building toward. And that's not going to get you the results that TransLink just achieved. In fact, if you're looking for a product that's really just about driving social engagement, Yammer is not even going to be the best product for you. The features we're building aren't in that direction. We are, we are, our focus is on using ideas from social to help your people and your teams work, be more productive by working openly. Now, that distinction can be subtle. It might even sound a little trite. So let me, let's talk about an example. This is, a, a quote, this is from the head of the Facebook newsfeed team. This was a few weeks ago. He talked about how they curate 2,000 stories a day for, for every user, and about 10% are read daily. Now, consumer social apps look at that gap as an opportunity. They want you to spend as much time in those products as possible. They want you coming back as often as possible. And this is not just Facebook. It's Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, Google+. Consumer social apps. This is why feeds in those products don't end. There's always something more interesting that we can show you. You're never done. This is why when there's a count or a notification bell and you click on it, it, goes, it clears. Even if you've only seen a couple of the items they wanted you to see, it's not work. So they don't want you to feel bad about it. You know, leave, come back when you're ready. They want you to come back as often as possible. Yammer, on the other hand, that content in your groups, that's work. That's your project teams. It's your functional teams. And so if you read two, if you have five unread in a group in Yammer, and you read two, we will remember that you still have three left, because that's work. Those are conversations from your team members that you need to see to stay up to date on this group. So when you leave and you come back, we'll tell you, hey, there's three more things for you to see. And then when you see those three things, the feed doesn't keep going. We don't keep trying to show you more things. We're going to end that feed so you can go and work on the next most important task that you have to do. We are trying to tailor social to help you be more productive. All right, so as you look at this list, think about how you and your network use Yammer. Do you map more to the left, or do you map more to the right? If you're using Yammer largely to, as a social outlet to share photos and, and status, if you're doing the occasional Yam Jam, and you're using it largely for these top-down broadcasts, if most of the posting is to all company or to the news feed. And if you're really monitoring user metrics and, and like group posting uh, rates, then you're going to get better employee morale. Your employees will feel more connected. But if you become disillusioned by what enterprise social could be, then we want to inspire you to use Yammer for the cases on the right. Don't just make Yammer another place to check. Replace some existing processes and move them to Yammer like what TransLink did. Engage in meaningful and sustained two-way collaboration with your employees. Use groups for your functional and project teams. That's the core organizing concept in Yammer. There's a group for every functional team, a group for every project at your company. And measure for business outcomes. And that's how you can really have your company start to work in a more connected and open way and drive business transformation. Yep. In some companies, they were used to, uh, from the private uh, side of their life, to, to interact in the way that we see in the left coast. This is great. I think you really just want a t-shirt. So we'll answer questions, and we'll do questions uh, at the end. I'm gonna, we'll try and get through it, and then and we'll do questions. Uh, but that's a, a good one. Um, so when we look at our product investments, they're really lined up to try and deliver on that right-hand side to help you drive that change at your companies. Uh, so we're going to break it up into three key areas, team collaboration, better with office, uh, and security. So team collaboration is really about helping your teams and your project and functional teams work better together uh, to get through the, the content they need to get through. We're going to make them, let them do it better with Office 5. We're going to talk a lot about Office 5 groups today, um, and then administrative security. We're going to enable your employees to work out loud, but with the trust of IT. You know, we launched EUMC and HIPAA earlier this year. Um, you know, we're going to continue to push productivity, but with Office 5, do it in the most safest and secure way possible. So let's get into, it's enough of me talking. I think we'll get into some demos. Uh, so we'll start with uh, team collaboration. We'll talk about some of the features that we're building and been building around team collaboration. Okay. All right. Can you guys hear me? Great. So as Pavan said, we're really focused on making Yammer a great place for teams to be productive. And with groups as the core organizing principle within Yammer, we want them to be great places for teams to come together and share and connect and work together as well. Um, 
what we've done, first and foremost, is create um, a unique sense of identity and purpose for each group. So you'll see when you go into a group, um, when we go into a group here, <laughs> uh, when you upload your group avatar, you can obviously customize the picture. We'll try to match the color of a header to that avatar to help you sort of brand the group a little bit. But obviously, we know that our customers have their own sort of branding guidelines, their own preferences. So you can always go in and set your own colors as well. Now, when you first land in a group, instead of showing you everything in the group, we try to be smart about it, and we show you just your new conversations. And so there's a tab here that you land on, and as you scroll through, you'll notice this um, header. It shrinks down, but it persists. You'll always have a sense of where you are. And it kind of gives you that sort of ambient sort of context for you to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> when you scroll through, you'll notice that the counter, both in the header and next to group name in the left-hand nav, decrements. And that just lets you know, hey, you're making progress through your to-dos in this group keeps track of things, and as you read through each message, it actually gets automatically pulled out of this feed into an archive, the All tab over here. And so again, you just sort of get a sense that you're moving quickly, making progress, and addressing things you need to do. Um, when I leave the group, that counter persists. So unlike consumer social, we don't just sort of erase your progress. We let you know, hey, there's a couple things here you still need to address. It, it'll be here when you're waiting, uh, when you get back, so that's really good. Um, cool. Well, let's get back to Janet. I think she has a pretty important question. She wants some feedback here. Do you mind typing a response? Oh, wait. Sorry. Hold on. Let me. This is embarrassing. Let me just fix. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think a few of you have been asking for this, you know, oh, for quite a while now. We are actually working on giving you the ability to edit posts. So. Woohoo! Audience, please. Applause, please. <laughs> nice. The other thing you might notice in this feed is this file that's attached. Look how beautifully it renders. We know that when you want to share attachments, URLs, pictures, you want to make them really engaging so that your teammates, I mean, we get so much shared content to us, but you want to make it engaging so that they can actually take the time and go look at it and spend some time on it and some thought on it. And so we have improved our preview experience for files, links, and pictures. Here's an example of a file, and let me show you the new photo experience. Beautiful. <laughs> cool. OK. Um, let's go back to our prior group. Now, as I said, um, and Pavan mentioned as well, when you get through your groups, you want to make sure that you know, you're not stuck in this endless feed. You're kind of completing what you need to do, and then you know to move on. So when you get through the end of your new messages, you get this prompt here, letting, letting you know you're all caught up and letting you know that you can move on to next task. So just a little example of a simple workflow we've put in place. Files. When we talk about getting work done in Yammer, obviously it's a lot more than just conversations. Um, about a year ago, we introduced the ability to edit Office Online files from Yammer. Six months ago, we introduced co-authoring. And today, we are working on making it possible to create a PowerPoint, Word, and Excel document straight from your Yammer experience. Um, what's great about collaborating on files in Yammer, as many of you know, is all the context you get with it, right? So it's cool social features like uh, conversations across your network attached to this file. So if you look at it, you're not just getting a static document. You're seeing the context, the thought process, the back and forth that went on around it. You also get things like the ability to follow files. So if there are changes made, you get notified. Um, you can lock a file down from further changes by marking it as official. So pretty great way to work on file collaboration. OK. Let's talk about um, ex external collaboration, actually. Um, working with customers, partners, and vendors, that's a regular part of what many of us do. And now, in addition to external networks and external messaging, we've shipped external groups. Um, these here. Uh, are fully functional. They uh, behave as any other group in your network, which means people outside your organization can view all the content. They can participate fully. But to make sure that people don't accidentally share information with people you're not supposed to, we've put in place a ton of visual indicators in the form of these globe icons all over the group. In the header, we've also included the names of your networks that are in this group. Um, so in real life, it might be something like Microsoft and Trafalgar, for example. 
And then when you click into the globe icon anywhere, you'll see a list of membership um, organized by their Yammer network as well. Anytime an external member appears in a group, you'll see that globe icon and their network next to their name. And as you post messages, you'll get that sort of yellow indicator letting you know uh, who from within and outside your organization can view that message. So um, pretty cool stuff here. Um, within Microsoft, actually, we use this pretty extensively. We have a group called the Yammer Service Updates Group. But it's an external group. Um, which we use to share early product ideas, A-B testing, get user and partner feedback. Many of you here I see belong to that group, but for those of you who aren't and you're interested in joining, grab any of us in these black Yammer t-shirts and we're happy to invite you to that group and kind of bring you along on that journey. Okay, let's move to the Unbox. Um, I'm guessing many of us here work on multiple projects at once and a lot of times you'll get pulled into things that you're not even a, uh, a, a part of. So for example, I get pulled in to share answers or documents with other teams. So the Yammer inbox is a great way to track all your conversations from across your network, whether or not you belong to that group. If you're mentioned in it, if there's an announcement you need to know about, that's where you go to kind of triage through things. Um, you'll notice here that we've brought the same experience over. You only see your unread messages first, and then there's an archive you can move things into. Um, a piece of feedback we've gotten from many of you is you want the ability to sort of quickly triage through your messages without having to go to, into each one. Mm -hmm. So if you click here, on the right of each message, you can mark them as read individually. Mm -hmm. But then if you go to the top, you can actually clear your inbox with a single click of a button and get back to um, inbox zero. So I know mark all as read has been high on many of your lists. so. We are, we've actually shipped that, I think. Did you guys notice that, that little thing that slid out in the left-hand nav? There is, a, there is a little profile picture of one of my teammates working in a group. And that may seem like a simple picture, this sort of real-time group activity indicator. But what we found is that users love this. This helps them be more responsive with their teammates, get back and start answering questions and engaging in real time. So we're just sort of you know, building these delightful little experiences to bring people back to places they need to be so they can actually engage and be productive together. OK, so we are going to move to mobile. Is it fine? Yeah. No, no, we were. Oh. Cool. All right. Um, in the past, Yammer's mobile apps were more of a companion app to the web experience. And we heard a lot of feedback around that. And so what we're actually doing now is bringing them up to feature parity on the core feature set. And we're also greatly improving performance on an iPad app and across all our apps as well. So super exciting there. These apps will now be able to stand on their own fully. Um, when you go in, you'll notice that we, similar to the web, make groups front and center in your experience. You'll land in this list of your groups, and you'll see those counters again, letting you know, hey, there's some unread things that you might want to address in these groups. So let's go into a group that we just saw my teammate in. Um, when you land in a group, you'll see that same sort of group branding that we talked about with the header and the profile picture. You'll see the new and the all tabs. And here, there's actually a poll. <laughs> so another delightful little thing we've added to our mobile experience. And I can I can actually vote for my mobile device. I can see um, results update in real time. When does it ship? Uh, the iOS is shipping soon, and then the Android will come later, like in weeks, hopefully. Yeah, pretty cool. And then if you scroll down through your group, again, you get that workflow letting you know, hey, you're all caught up here. Move on to the next thing. And you can actually just keep scrolling th through to your next most relevant group with you know, an answer conversation. The last. Oh, actually, let's go to inbox. If we go to the inbox on mobile, same thing here. You see that unread tab and all tab. Um, we just marked everything as read, so you'll see there's nothing unread on mobile. But if I swipe left, you get to mark it as unread. If this were a new message, that would let you mark it as read and just get it into the archive. If you swipe right, you can unfollow a conversation, stop receiving updates there. The last thing I want to show you on mobile is um, our integration with the iOS native search. 
And this lets you quickly search for content in Yammer from your iPhone or iPad home screen. So let's say I want to call my colleague Molly. Just type in her name and then see the result right there. If I click on it, it takes me right to her profile page so I can get the information I need to call her. Okay. So all of the stuff we showed you looks great. And that's because it's taking place in this active, vibrant Yammer network. But if you're new to Yammer, you might be wondering, how do I get from zero to this sort of fully engaged network? Like, how do I get my users onboarding and using it? And these are you know, areas that the Yammer team is working really hard on as well. So we're doing um, two major investments. The first is on new user onboarding. When new users get to Yammer, they're going to receive an improved uh, sign-up flow experience, which gets them faster into the product and introduces them to what Yammer's for. Um, a big part of that's going to be the group discovery experience, getting them into those groups so they don't get stuck in the all-company feed, scrolling through and reading things and not actually uh, creating content and doing work in there. And so I'm actually a, an active user in here, but if I were a new user, you'd see that um, Yammer will suggest groups for me. And we can do that because of the signals we get from Azure AD. So people I work frequently with, perhaps people who are related to me on the org chart, that information goes into Yammer's group suggestions, which is another great benefit of being connected to Office 365. Um, in addition to that, for new group admins, uh, when you create a new group now, um, I know a bunch of you have been in this same situation. You create a group, and it just looks empty. And, you don't get people in it, and it's sort of hard to get that group un up and running. And so we're doing, here's an example of a new group we just created. What we have now is sort of guidance for new group admins, letting you know, hey, post a picture, um, post a description of the group, invite people to it, and start a message. Just sort of get this group up and running, give people the context of how to interact with you in that group. And this is something we've actually heard from our customers as best practices, and it's worked across many, many networks and many, many customers. So thank you for that feedback. We are definitely listening, and keep it coming. If you find other best practices, we'd love to learn them from you. OK. Okay, cool. All right, so a bunch of things that we're doing around just helping teams collaborate in Yammer, um, and more to come on the roadmap section that Pavan will cover later. These are all things that we've actually, let me go back. These are all things that we've either shipped or, be, or will be shipping in the next few months. The only exception is edit post. That's going to take a little while longer just to set expectations, <laughs> but it is coming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was a live demo, though. <laughs> it was real, but we're working through some scenarios. Um, before we jump into the Better with Office 365 um, demo, I want to kind of set some context. Pavan talked about zooming out. I'm going to zoom out even one le level further to talk about Office 365's all up vision for collaboration. And what we believe, and I'm sure you've been hearing this in our sessions, is one size doesn't fit all. We've seen it with our customers. We recommend solutions for one customer, but you can't just recommend the same thing for every customer. We see it in the market with point solutions that come up and gain traction, but they're only addressing a piece of collaboration, leaving other pieces uncovered. Um, and we think there's a lot of reasons why um, there's such a diversity of needs in the workplace. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the task at hand determines the tool you need. So for me personally, I'm sure a lot of you do the same thing. If I want to ask a quick question of a teammate, I'll just ping them on chat. If I want to put on more formal communication, I might use email. And to connect with other teams, share best practices, crowdsource solutions, um, I use Yammer. And so you know, we kind of work through these different tools to achieve the different purposes at hand. The other thing is you know, we have more diversity in the workplace than ever. Millennials, you know, they grow up on chat and social. And their preferences will have more and more of a voice in the workplace as they become a huge portion of um, the workforce in the coming years. I think the latest that I heard was something like 46% in the next four years. So big influx. Um, and the last thing is business imperative. We know that you know, the cultural objectives that companies are trying to achieve, the business processes, like the TransLink one that Pavan talked about, those are things that drive people uh, to their choice of tools. At Yammer, we hear that customers really want to break down those silos, 
work in a more agile and connected way. And that's the reason why they choose Yammer. Um, as change agents here, we also feel the same way. Whether or not all companies are there at this state, it doesn't really matter. We know that businesses, businesses evolve and the tools we use will evolve as well. So with Office 365, we're delivering a complete group collaboration solution to meet the needs of diverse teams, wherever they fall on that spectrum. Um, we know that, you know, obviously, there are key activities that take place across your teams. We've got a solution for all of them, email and calendar with Outlook, all things content related with Office Online and SharePoint, and OneDrive, you know, Skype for business for anything real time, and now connecting across the org with Yammer. Um, again, it doesn't matter if your team uses one, two, or all of these solutions. They're all built on a set of shared services. And the one I want to talk about most today is Office 365 Groups. Um, it's going to be really exciting. So why don't we just jump into that demo? Awesome. So, uh, yeah, I don't need this. Uh, thanks. So, Juliet was talking about Office 65 Groups. So today, we're super excited to announce, I know a lot of you have been waiting for it, uh, for Yammer to start integrating with Office 365 Groups. Uh, so now, when you create a group in Yammer, it'll create it in AAD, and the membership will sync, the group name will sync, the avatar will sync. It'll be in AAD Office 365 Group, which is going to be awesome. And so what that means is you'll have also those fav your favorite productivity apps from across the suite connected to a Yammer group. Uh, I'll talk about timing. Not, not quite today. <laughs> Soon. We want it now. Um, and so let's, let's see what this looks like. So if we're in a group, uh, you can see that you have your Office 365 resources there on the right. Um, and why don't we start with the SharePoint document library. So now every Yammer group will have a SharePoint document library for that team. So you can see the, the name, the avatar, the colors all come over, the membership comes over. So now the team has a place where they can, you can go and put files, structured content, and the people in that Yammer group and that team will automatically have access. Permissions are all taken care of. And now you get all the great functionality of SharePoint. Uh, so you have the workflow, you have the, the version history, you have the sharing permissions. Uh, you can manage all of that from SharePoint. So awesome that every team will now have uh, a SharePoint document library. Um, and if, you cl yeah, if we click, so the other thing is by connecting to Office 5 groups, Yammer groups are now in your global address list. So you can address these groups from anywhere in the suite, which is awesome. So if I take this file and I want to share it, and I can share it to, we go back to our favorite project, Targaryen, um, and it just auto-completes. And so you can, uh, the groups are in the gal, you can easily type a comment, share this file into Yammer, and it'll share into Yammer, and you'll get that rich file preview that we showed you earlier as well. So really awesome. Same thing from email. You can take any email now and start to forward, forward it. And because Yammer groups are in the gal, it'll autocomplete and you can share forward emails into Yammer. And if so, so that's a lot of ways of like, so now you have your team and they're putting their files in SharePoint document libraries. We've also made it really easy to pull those files into Yammer to do conversations around them. So we have this new file picker in Yammer where you can go and pick files, so this OneDrive file picker, you can pick files from your personal OneDrive and browse across your personal file, all recent files, pick any file. You can look at all of your SharePoint document libraries that are attached to your Yammer groups. You could browse all of those as well, pick any file and attach it to a Yammer conversation and start a rich conversation about, around that in Yammer. So also really cool uh, new file picker. And then, Oh yeah. Okay, so if we go back to that file picker, so just in the, over the long term, what we want to do is we're going to move all of our Yammer files into OneDrive and SharePoint document libraries. That's going to take a little while. So in the, in the interim state, uh, what we recommend is that you put a lot of your, your files that really need to be around uh, in for a more persistent state, um, things where you want the advanced permissions or workflow around it, put those in your SharePoint document library. For things that you want to do quick sharing on, the quick images, quick videos, continue to share those easily through Yammer. And so, and in the long term, we'll move all of those over to SharePoint and, one, and uh, one, OneDrive and SharePoint document libraries. So next we have SharePoint team site. So every group has a SharePoint team site now. 
And so hopefully you've seen a lot of the, the great work that the SharePoint team has been doing. They're announcing a lot of stuff here today. G brand new mobile apps, redesigned SharePoint team site. Every Yammer group now has a SharePoint team site. So uh, for any of your structured content, or a wiki, or a blog, or if you want to just build a, a, an internet site for this team, you can do that now with the, with the SharePoint sites, and it's connected to your Yammer group. So everyone will easily have access, be able to go in and out um, of that experience. So really, uh, really just a lot of functionality that we're built, bringing in to every Yammer group. We also have, if we go back, we have OneNote. So now you have a OneNote notebook for every Yammer group. So the team can quickly jump in, uh, take an amazing uh, notes from the keynote today, um, and collaborative yet, co collaboratively edit. Uh, you get all the rich functionality of OneNote. You get the, the inking and the collaboration. Uh, you get the syncing across all your mobile de devices. You get all of that with OneNote connected to your Yammer group. Um, you might be wondering what's going to happen to Yammer Notes. We're going to get rid of Yammer Notes. Uh, we're going to migrate all your existing Yammer Notes. We're not going to throw the data away. We'll migrate them all. <laughs> we'll migrate them all over to Word documents. Um, so we showed you have all this rich capability to create these Word documents in, in Yammer now. And then you'll also now have this OneNote notebook to take a lot of lightweight, easy notes for your team during a meeting, whatever it is, and then easily share those into Yammer. Um, so all of the Office 365, I'll just, time, I'll just address timing. Um, so all the stuff we're showing here around the connected Office 365 groups, it's going to roll out in many phases. Uh, the first phase is for connected tenants where you're enforcing Office 365 identity. Um, we hope that rolls out um, within the next number of months, so this calendar year. And then we'll continue to expand to, to more complex scenarios um, and other groups over time. There's a session that's going to go deep on Yammer and Office 365 groups on Thursday. It's B. BRK2019. I don't know if those numbers are helpful. Um, <laughs> but they'll go really deep on Yammer and Office 365 groups and, and go through all of the timing. So they'll be able to answer uh, much more specifics on that. Um, so, so we talked about OneNote. Uh, next, we have Planner. People have been asking for task management in Yammer, and now you have it. Uh, if you haven't used Planner yet, you should definitely check it out. It's pretty awesome. Really lightweight, task management, very visual, easy to get started with. Um, and so now every Yammer group has uh, task management through planners. You can come in here, create tasks, uh, assign them to people. This team is clearly slack slacking. They have seven tasks. They haven't started any of them. <laughs> Being at Ignite is no excuse. Uh, so awesome. So you, every team now, you can have this Yammer group. They can be working um, and have task management through planner. So uh, those are the ones that are coming uh, soon. We also want to continue to add to this list. So we're going to continue to build on this foundation of Office 365 groups. <laughs> Calendar in Outlook is another one that we're really excited about that's going to come later, uh, but so that every team in Yammer uh, can have an Outlook calendar uh, and go and do team meetings and things like that. So another exciting one. So that's a lot around Yammer connecting uh, through Office 5 groups. Uh, we also want to keep pushing Yammer out to the rest of the suite. And so I'll show you Delve. Some of you guys have probably seen this, but this is rolling out to GA now, or it rolled out recently. Uh, so everyone, so you seen probably the preview, but now you have it in your tenant. If you want to play with it, you can go to Delve, and on any, any file, you can start a Yammer conversation around that file, share that file into Yammer. We also have this with Office 365, 365 video um, and with Skype meeting broadcast. <laughs> no, not yet. Cool. So that's a lot around Office 365 groups. We'll go back to the presentation. Yeah, so I talked a little bit about timing already. Again, if you want to go to the Thursday session, they'll go a little deeper. Uh, and that's, the, that's a lot of the end user stuff that we've been building. Um, now we're going to jump in and talk about some of the admin scenarios and some of the security uh, features we've been working on as well. OK, cool. So we've been doing a ton of work in the IT admin department taking the capabilities of Office 365, not rebuilding them, but taking them and applying them to Yammer. So now you have a simple, consistent way of managing Yammer from your admin center in Office 365. Um, as Pavan said, we recently automatically provisioned Yammer for every eligible Office 365 customer. That's a lot of users out there. And what that means is we had to do a ton of work to earn that right to be lit up in the suite automatically. 
Uh, we now fall under the same compliance boundaries as Office 365, offering things like EU Model Clause, HIPAA, SOC 1 and 2, ISO 27001, um, reports. And so i um, super excited to have that happen. Um, now that we are automatically provisioned, what you'll notice first and foremost is that Yammer appears in the app launcher. <laughs> um, so that means your users can discover Yammer, click into that tile, and start using it automatically. Um, they don't have to log in separately. Their Office 365 credentials work, which is great. You don't have to do anything to deploy it to your users. Um, what we also introduced earlier this year is the ability to enforce Office 365 identity. So if you have users who are on both Yammer and Office 365, you can force them to log in to Yammer using their O365 credentials. And what that does is give you access or give you the ability to manage them through Azure AD. You get all the functionality there, like single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you go one step further and block, check that box, block users uh, without, an office, without a Yammer license, that then gives you the ability to granularly manage access to Yammer at a user level via licensing. So um, let's go see how this works in the admin center. Let's take Ali, for example. Um, from the admin center, I can simply click into the product licensing dropdown, and you will see Yammer there along with the other products and services she's licensed for. It works just like any other workload in Office 365. And if you toggle her off, she'll no longer be able to log in with her O365 credentials. She can't log in at yammer.com, and the Yammer tile will disappear from the app launcher as well. We're actually not going to take Yammer away from Ali, so let's toggle her back on. This is not a super common scenario. I'd say that we get this request um, you know, from customers who are really trying to you know, control specific individuals or teams for compliance reasons, um, but not a super common uh, use case. The other thing that you can now manage centrally through Office 365 admin portal is domains. If you guys recall the old days, uh, managing Yammer network domains, adding a new one or deleting one was a painful process. You had to log a support call, maybe multiple support calls. But now we've made a self-service process within the admin center. So here, if you just add or delete a domain, um, that will propagate through Office 365. And of course, your Yammer network will honor that as well. Same thing with groups. Um, as Pava mentioned, Office 365 groups are stored in Azure AD, which means your groups in Yammer that are connected appear here in this list. So if let's go back to Project Targaryen. Is that it? Is That's two-way creation? Am I creating a Yammer? Yeah, it's two-way. So if I make changes here centrally as an admin, those changes to group name, uh, you know, group creation, group membership, public-private settings, they will be propagated across the suite. Yammer will honor that. It works the other way around. If you make those changes from Yammer or other workloads, that will get saved up to Azure AD and then again get propagated across. Okay. All right. Let's talk about MAM, security on your mobile device. So last month, we actually shipped integration with Intune uh, for mobile app management, we've integrated our Yammer app with uh, Intune's SDK, so you get the full functionality there. So now you see, um, in order to, you know, this lets you prevent the, um, you know, unauthorized, accidental leaking of information on mobile devices. So now, to get into Yammer app, um, I now have to type in a PIN or use Touch ID to verify I'm the right user, making sure that unauthorized people don't get into the Yammer app. And once I'm in, what I can and can't do is also dictated by my admin's policy. So for example, if I want to copy content down to my device, let's say I want to add a colleague to my you know, address book on my phone, you'll see those fields are now grayed out and there's sort of an explanation telling me why I can't do that. And that's one policy that you can set. Um, if I want to do something like maybe copy a conversation in Yammer into another app because it's interesting, maybe I want to email it out, um, maybe share it in the chat, Let's take an example here. I can copy this conversation, and it works fine in Yammer if I paste it into a new post. But if I go to, let's say, my Notes app and I try to paste it there, nothing. 
nothing will happen. These are just a couple of things that you can do with MAM. There's a ton more. We have a deep dive session on this as well, so be sure to attend if you want to see all the policies you can set. All right. Last demo here. Earlier this year, the Office 365 team shipped the reporting dashboard, which lets you monitor engagement and usage across all your workloads in Office 365, and obviously Yammer is included as part of that. When you get to the reporting dashboard from Admin Center, you scroll down, you'll see tiles of all your workloads. What's great about the Yammer one is now you can actually measure the true engagement of your network. Before, you know, we used to measure engagement um, by things like how many people are posting. But now you can see metrics like you know, how many people have read messages, how many people have liked. We know that's going to be a big number of people in your network. So they're not actively posting all the time, but they're still getting a lot of value from the conversations in Yammer. If you click into that tile, you'll see our usage reports. And you can see activity at the network level as well as the user level. And this lets you do things like identify your Yammer champions to sort of recruit to drive adoption or help you identify populations that you might want to go out to and sort of do some outreach with. So um, all the stuff that we're showing here is available for Global Admins today. Um, I know there are a lot of requests from you out here to make this data more publicly available to community managers, group admins, executives. And we will actually soon let you export this data out via Power BI content packs. Um, I'm not announcing anything today, but keep your ears open this week for potentially some news around that. Um, it'll be pretty exciting. The next set of usage reports we will be working on are uh, client activity reports. So showing you how your users access Yammer on the web and on mobile. And then um, group level reports to show you activities and engagement within groups. OK, I think we're going to move on to yeah, so roadmap. We'll, um, awesome. Sweet. OK, so that was uh, administration and security. So a bunch of stuff around Office uh, Connecting Tenants and, and uh, MAM and identity. We're going to talk about the roadmap. So this is probably my least favorite section of the presentation. Uh, as you all know, you know, at Yammer, we try not to look out more than two or three months um, you know, from where we are. And that's because we're constantly trying to learn and we're constantly trying to listen. We want to learn from all the A-B tests we're doing. We want to learn from the features we're, de we're de developing. We want to learn from uh, you know, the complexity of those features. And we want to listen from how uh, you guys are all reacting to those features and how they're landing in your networks. And so, you know, as we go through this, oh, this is, I think that's a different presentation, maybe. Yeah, let's just leave it here. As we go through this, uh, I'll just go over the different channels that we're listening on. So user voice, we brought back user voice. Um, we check that every week. So definitely feel free to leave comments there. Give us feedback on user voice. We're on uh, App Store. We pay attention to App Store reviews. Uh, we read those every week. Twitter, we're on Twitter. Uh, the customer network that's now on Lithium. Cust we have this customer external group that we've created that, that Juliet was talking about. If any of you want to join this external group, let us know. We'll put you into the external group. Um, and then, of course, the standard channels around account teams and support. So as I go through this roadmap, uh, just know that it's, you know, we're looking three to 12 months out. There's a lot of ideas here. They're not really prioritized. And so give us feedback on what are the things that you want to see from Yammer. Help us figure out what we should build next. Um, and anything out, you know, three to 12 months out, we're really, uh, that input is, is really valued. So let's talk about what, uh, what we're thinking about, uh, what's coming in the roadmap. So around team collaboration, let's start with that bucket. So there's the first five here I'm going to go into a little bit more depth on uh, in the future slides. So I'll just quickly go over them. Messaging improvements, group types and group headers, direct messaging, uh, the onboarding experience, and a simplified landing experience. Beyond that, we have desktop apps. 
we've heard this a lot from, from you all. Uh, for teams to really work tightly and closely, we want to create some great desktop apps. Uh, group level connectors, we want to leverage the Office 365 connectors and connect them to a group so that you could bring in a Twitter, uh, bring in Twitter comments into your group or bring in stuff from Jira or from GitHub, um, be able to collaborate around those third party apps within Yammer. Improved notifications, we've done a lot in this area, but we want to keep doing more, so around mobile and push. Um, so that if you are mobile, we want to make it easier for you and your team to stay in touch. Localization, we're going to do more on localization, improve it, and support more languages. We want to get up to the level of language support that Office 365 has, so that's going to come. Improve search, uh, this is some UX improvements, but also just making it easier to find content that you're looking for. And then mobile parity, we've shown a, a lot on this. We've done a lot of work here over the past uh, year. A uh, year and a half for iOS, Android, and the iPad, but really trying to get them all up to speed um, and on par with the web. So let's go through those first five a little bit more. Messaging improvements. This is really about trying to help your users and your teams express themselves better. Uh, so some of these we've heard a lot from you all. Rich text, um, bullets, and numbering, and being able to bring those into Yammer post. Being able to move a post. So if somebody posts to the wrong group or they post to all company, how do you get that to the right team? <laughs> just have to say these magic buzzwords. <laughs> um, pinned highlighted replies. So if you have these really long threads, how do you say, this is the, this is the answer, this is where I want to direct people toward? Yes. <laughs> the ability, next Ignite's going to be amazing, huh? <laughs> the ability to summarize a conversation. So what was the takeaway? What's the next action? What, what was the result of this conversation? Uh, Real-time typing indicators to help your team be more responsive. So there's a bunch of stuff. This is just a sample. We have a, a long list here of things we want to do to the messaging uh, to make it easier for your users to convey ideas. Group types and group headers. A lot of you probably saw some of the early tests we did around group types. We want to keep uh, experimenting there and exploring what's the right way to bring in different types of groups into Yammer. Group headers. Uh, the design team's done some awesome work here around trying to find the right balance between personalization of a group and productivity. And you can see if you put a really big image at the top, it pushes the feed all the way down. So we have some really uh, clever uh, ways of trying to give you that personalization, but still trying to, to make it so that you can get through your content quickly. Um, if you stop by the, the booth, uh, we have some demo uh, prototype that we could show you of, of how we're thinking of solving this. Direct messaging. Uh, we have online now. And then we have private messages. Online now is great for this real quick back and forth. Uh, and then private messages for uh, more thoughtful, deeper conversations. We're going to clean a lot of that up, consolidate those two into a one concept to make it a really easy way for you to contact people privately. So you can see this thing in the, the bottom left, direct messaging. Uh, so if you get a comment or get a post from someone who you work with closely, they'll show up there so you can quickly get back to it. And when you click on it, you'll get a feed of all your conversations with that person. So you can ex easily get back to a, an old conversation you had with that person. And so you'll be able to see all of those, con all of those interactions with that same person. Uh, so this will be, um, I think, a really big feature. We're really excited about this one. New onboarding experience. Uh, we've been working on this uh, for a little while. We don't quite have it right yet. We want to keep iterating. But helping new users, when they come in, understand what Yammer is for. Uh, get them into the right groups, help them understand how to use groups. So we want to do a lot more work here to, to get that experience right. Um, we've heard a lot of, uh, we've done some, a lot of customer calls on this one too to, to find out like how do you uh, bring new, new users into your networks? And we want to bring that into this experience. And a simplified landing experience. This is another one we've heard a lot of customer feedback on. The current landing experience has you know, three different feeds. It's not exactly clear what goes into each feed. So we want to clean a lot of that up too. Um, and really kind of just go to one feed that's largely just based on, on people you follow, topics you follow. Uh, and then at the, at the top, highlight if there's groups that have new content since the last time you were here. Get you back to those groups and then really clean up that feed below it. So we're going to simplify that experience as well. So that's a lot in team collaboration. Uh, within the Office 365 bucket, Sweet connected groups. So I talked about there's going to be phases here, so we'll keep working on that. But in addition to making that available to more, more, more networks and more teams. We're going to do deeper and more interesting integrations as well. So you know, maybe not just have a link to Planner, but if you have a task that's coming up that's due, how do we surface that in Yammer? If somebody edits a, a Word document that you've been collaborating on, how do we notify you about that in Yammer and create some workflow around it in Yammer? So we're going to start to, 
to go that next step with these office with these other workloads in in the suite and bring them more of those into Yammer. Skype uh, Skype for business. So I'm going to I have a slide on that. So I'll hold off and team calendars. Show SharePoint files in the feed. So when you share a link to a SharePoint file into Yammer, we want to you know today a lot of times you get this uh, it's behind a login wall and so it'll say like login. Uh, we're going to fix that since we know your Office 365 identity now. So we'll show you a rich preview of that file and let you view it from within the feed. Same thing with Office 365 video and stream. When you paste those links from, the, from any of those providers, we'll play those in line. Uh, deeper SharePoint files and connect to the Office 365 profile. So you know the Office 365 profile with Delve uh, is continuing to iterate. We're going to connect to that as well and start to leverage that. And then the SharePoint, SharePoint web part. Uh, so the share that's getting released, I think, uh, at this Ignite too. So SharePoint's talking about that. So if you go there, uh, they'll show off the, a new Yammer SharePoint web part, which is awesome. So the couple that I skipped, Escalate to Skype for Business. Uh, this we hope uh, will come in the near future as well. But from any, you know, when you're looking at a user in Yammer and you're on their hover card, to quickly go into an audio video call with that user. Or if you're looking at a conversation, to be able to go into an audio video call with the participants of that conversation. Uh, same thing from a group. So we're going to try and make this really easy. Uh, team calendars. I talked about this earlier. We want to have a, a calendar for every team uh, in Yammer so that you can put those recurring meetings on there. And then we can, we can alert you when those meetings are coming up and let you do meeting notes, jump into OneNote, start meeting notes for them, and create a whole uh, workflow around that. The last bucket I have here is around administration and security. So Office 365 audit logging. Um, if you go to that session, uh, I gave you the numbers. Oh, you guys remember the numbers, right? I, uh, on Thursday, yeah, that's right. Uh, on Thursday, they're going to go deep on this, and uh, they'll show you audit logging. That's, that's releasing very soon. Uh, client and group reports. Uh, Juliet was talking about this. We hope client reports come out this year and group reports early next year. In addition to the reports, we'll also uh, hoping to have Power BI reports for both of those as well, so you'll be able to make both of those available to your whole company. Embed improvements, we want to do more to make embed stylistically fit into wherever you're, you're, you're including it, on whatever site, um, um, and also like let it like flow with the feed. Uh, that's also high on the list. Customize the all-company group. We hear that one a lot. Uh, <laughs> change the avatar, change the name, uh, be able to put some, some customization on that all-company group. So that's uh, kind of a summary of the roadmap, three to nine months out. A lot of the ideas we're thinking about, we're obviously not going to do all of this. So again, uh, use those channels, give us feedback, let us know which one of these you're most interested in. Now, you know, I started by talking a lot about uh, using Yammer and, and really changing how you work. Um, and so, you know, all of these features are great, but they're only valuable if you get adoption. Um, so, and there's someone in the audience here who's much better at talking about adoption than I am. Uh, so, why don't we bring him up here? You guys probably, some of you guys probably know Steve Wynn. Uh, Steve Wynn's our product evangelist for Yammer now. Uh, so, welcome, Steve, and we'll let you take it over from here. Thank you. It's great to be back. So, perhaps the uh, stories of Yammer's demise have been greatly exaggerated. It's great to be back and uh, great to be here, back with you all at Ignite. Uh, for those of you that know me, you know that my passion for Yammer goes well beyond the screens that you see and a lot of the features that Juliet and, and Pavan have been talking about. My passion for Yammer was really born from seeing the way that Yammer transforms the way that companies operate and transforms the way that individuals and teams work together. So I want to end the session today by talking about three things uh, that you can start doing to inspire people at your company to see similar transformations. First thing, I was working, not too long ago, I was working with a sales organization. And like any sales organization, they had a goal of increasing sales. But of course, they knew that in order to do, in order to do that, they needed to do, be better at sharing field intelligence. So the general manager for this sales operations team, he started something. On Fridays, what he would do is he would post in, in the sales operations Yammer group. He'd say, what success have you had? And he, and he would tag it with Friday roll call. And he had a little caveat. He said, 
regardless of whether you had a million dollar deal, just any kind of learning that you had, what success did you have? What did you learn? Uh, as little as it might be, share it with the team. Maybe you uh, made a new contact. Maybe you learned something. Maybe you learned a new strategy about how to sell our product. Share that with the team. And they did this, and over a couple of weeks, it started to build some momentum. And I remember a story, there was a, it was a Wednesday, and a woman shared in the Yammer group, she said, is it Friday roll call yet? which was really cool because it started to show that the strategy was sticking. It was starting, they were starting to build this culture of sharing knowledge and, and expertise within the team. Now, after a few months of doing this, they started to do something that the GM decided to change it up a little bit. On Monday, he actually posted and he said, I'm going to do something different this week. Normally on Fridays, we share successes. This week, I want you to try something new. Experiment. Take a risk. Do something that you don't normally do and share it with the team on Friday. Whether you, whether you succeeded or whether you failed, share what you did on Friday. And I loved this because what it did was it created some safety within the organization to experiment and to try something new. And so as leaders within our organization, it's really important for us to be setting the conditions for people to feel safe to share and to learn from one another. For the longest time, there's been a demographic within many of our companies deskless workers that have gone without a voice. And many times, these are people that are very much, they're, they're closely connected to your customers. They're closely connected to the products that you're building. And in many ways, we haven't done a, a good enough job of giving these people a voice or giving these people a way to connect with others and find expertise within your organizations. One of my favorite stories around this was actually when I was a Yammer customer. I remember one day somebody posted in our network, he said, I'm looking for steam system design expertise. And we were like a fledgling network at that time. We didn't have that many people. And I thought, good luck finding anybody with that. Well, within a couple of hours, he had answers from somebody in Belgium, Ohio, and Iowa, all with people saying, I have that expertise or I know somebody with that expertise. And this is where Yammer really excels, connecting people at the edges of your network, helping your organization find answers to questions when they don't know who has the answer. So connect your deskless workers. And pr so project teams. Find a team within your organization, a project team within your company that maybe they're tired of the norm. They're sick of disjointed email threads, or frankly, maybe they're just tired of being left off email threads entirely. Find those teams, engage them on Yammer. This is how we operate as a team within Yammer. Go to Simon Terry's uh, Working Out Loud session later this week and learn some of the, the, the key tenets for why it's important to work out loud and how that can be important as a project team. Because you see, in an era where project resources are moving from project to project to project and bouncing around all the time, it becomes even more important for people to have access to information more quickly so they can get up to speed on those projects more quickly as well. So when you think about people and their ability to connect as teams, I was reading a, an article recently, maybe you've seen these articles of top 10 tips to be productive, right? And it had, this, it had a lot of the common things that you think of, things like um, setting a timer or uh, removing distractions. But one of the things that I thought was interesting about this particular article that I hadn't seen in other similar articles was how it talked about openness and sharing. And, and being open about sharing what you're working on and doing so early and often so that you can get feedback more quickly. So being open and, and transparent with your project teams has more to do about with, your, with your ability for your teams to be productive as well. So as we think about how you're using Yammer today, you saw the, the chart that, uh, that Pavan shared earlier where perhaps your organization is using Yammer more on the left side. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we want to inspire you to think about how you can get your teams to really get work done and really start to transform your organizations by doing things that were on the right-hand side. So really think about how your, your teams can work more openly, share those successes and learnings, and empower employees to have a greater voice. I'll turn it back over to Juliet and Pavan. Cool. Thank you, Steve. Now that you're back in Yammer, you'll have less time to read those BuzzFeed articles. <laughs> cool. Um, so that's, that's all we have. Um, I think we're going to hang out and answer questions, though. Uh, there's a lot of Yammer people here. Um, so we want to really thank you all for coming. 
Uh, if you have any questions, just come up here or find any of the Yammer folks who are wearing these t-shirts. We're happy to answer them. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.